Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel here. It's the Mac, and welcome back to uh, something new, not uh, War Game Design Studios this time. Having a look at uh, Decisive Campaigns, the Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris. So this game is, uh, I think it's called VR Design, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, VR Designs is the company or uh, person behind this um, creation of this game and it's sort of uh, distributed or released through uh, Slytherin Software and Matrix Games uh, basically so uh, yeah I've actually been uh, requested on the channel to uh, showcase this game uh, so um, I thought I would do that and have a look at it it looks really good I've been fooling around with it a bit uh, it's definitely a different type of war game that I'm used to, uh, but I can see some great potential in this title. Uh, and, uh, yeah, another note is that there's actually a series released, I mean, there's a couple of games released in this uh, sort of franchise, the Decisive Campaigns there. This is the, uh, this is the first one that was released, the Blitzkrieg from Warsaw to Paris. Uh, also, I think they have one called Case Blue. And it's the attack for Stalingrad and the drive for Stalingrad there in Kharkov offensives, uh, taking part in 42 there, 43, if I'm not mistaken. They also have one called uh, Decisive Campaigns uh, Barbarossa, and that's of course the initial attack uh, of the um, the Germans, uh, the attack to, on Russia itself, the uh, Soviet Union there. So uh, Barbarossa. And they, the latest one they have released is uh, around the Ardennes Offensive, Battle of the Bulge there. And uh, it's actually, it differs a bit from uh, the other titles that it's, it's, I think it's sort of smaller scale. It's just, uh, just below the tactical uh, level there. Um, so uh, that one looks really good. Uh, that that probably is more my forte. I'm probably I'm, I'm gonna try to get that game and then show it on the channel because it looks really really good. Anyway, this is the first one here: decisive campaigns, the Blitzkrieg here from Warsaw Paris. Uh, so this one takes up Case White, which was the uh, the attack on Poland, of course. The case Yellow was the attack on France and Belgium and Holland. And Operation Sea Lion they have as well, the um, hypothetical uh, attack on Great Britain there, the uh, planned offensive that never took place. So uh, they also have some scenarios, Bzura, Bzura is in Poland, uh, sort of a, um, a part of the, uh, the campaign there, so, so this is actually a scenario. They have the Netherlands scenario and uh, I'm not sure what these are. Poland DC2 hybrid. I'm not sure what they are. I'm gonna check the manual for it. Anyway, the game is designed that you could you can actually play it back to back, basically. So I mean if you just click this huge one here, start campaign, you will play all these campaigns in in order. And what what's cool as well is that they it's implemented that whatever happens in these campaigns, casualties and, and everything and experience. All that carries over to uh, the different uh, operations, so that's that's a pretty cool feature they got. Uh, and of course, you could play. There's a tutorial here. It's kind of basic. Uh, it doesn't really. I, I played the tutorial, and I, I actually thought it was wasn't that good because you, you don't really get a good grasp of the game playing the tutorial. Um, uh, but you do by following the manual, which I did. I had to pull up the manual and you know, read the manual basically to get into the game. It's not a huge manual, it's actually quite okay. I think it's around uh, 80, 82 pages or something. So it's, it's not a huge manual, but still it's, it's some comprehensive reading there. Uh, right, but you don't have to play the whole shebang, you know, that's gonna take you quite a long while to, to churn through all these uh, massive campaigns, but you could play them individually as well. You could just play, play Case White, or Case Yellow or Operation Sea Lion there. So there's a couple of things that they have made. It's actually... Um, let's have a look at the manual, uh, see if I can pull it over here. Yeah. Uh, okay, the music stopped, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so this is... 
the manual. Yeah, okay, so it's 82 pages. Uh, so the guy who actually made these games, he, he also made this Advanced Tactics, uh, which is apparently, I never played it actually, which is a shame, because it's apparently it was a very, very well-received game. Uh, it's not a historical accurate game, as I've understood it. It's, it's just a massive strategy turn-based game that sort of lets your imagination flow. And there's random maps and random... Lots of random elements in it, uh, but it's. It, I think it, it seems pretty good, and I've, I've read a lot of reviews that it's actually well received, and many people love this game. So I probably might give it a crack. Uh, I'll, we'll see. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So the the. Uh, I mean, this looks pretty daunting. The <laughs> table of contents, uh, but there's a lot of stuff in here. But it's actually covered. Just quite. There's not a lot covered in every in 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 every sort of. Uh, chapter here it's very kind of basically written manual here um so uh this is the guy here uh, yeah so this is the uh, uh vic the guy's called vic uh he he is he's he has a little story here about what he's made and why he's made this game and uh so he i think he, he got some criticism for the the, the attack this gold one that it wasn't very historically accurate, but it was a fun game to play. So he decided to make these uh, decisive campaigns, and, and he's put in a lot of effort to make these very historically accurate. And that's what, what the main focus is of these games. And the um, amount of research and the actual units, and and also uh, the part, what you're going to be stumbling upon playing these huge operations that actually happened in um, the real operation as well, as I've understood it. Uh, so... Very intriguing. Um, so this is the manual here. I think the best way to actually show the game is to just open it up and uh, have a look. Um, so let's go back here. So for instance, if I start, let's say we want to play the Polish one, we just press case white there. It's actually the one I mostly uh, looked at, uh, the Polish one. And we can have a look a bit what it, what you are greeted with and what options you have available for this. Because um, there's, there's different things you can actually choose in here uh, to make the, your experience of the campaign um, a bit different. Uh, so here you have, yeah. okay, Victor uh, uh, Rikers. Rikers. Yeah, so this is probably the guy uh, who's designed the game and everything. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, you have difficulties. Apparently, the AI is very well programmed in these games. Um, it's, it's, a, it's supposed to be a really hard game to, to actually pull off major victories and stuff. I read some stuff on the forums, and people are struggling to actually pull victories out of these. <laughs> so that's good. I mean, wow. Um, I like those kind of games. It gives you a challenge. Uh, so yeah, you could choose different kinds of uh, difficulties on here. So if you have normal, it's there's no like bonuses. This basically just gives you bonuses for the AI. I mean, if I would choose challenging, uh, there's a, a movement bonus, there's a combat bonus, there's a transfer bonus. So this is, the AI gets advantages over you. Uh, hard, even more, uh, very hard, super hard. Uh, looks pretty daunting. Uh, so normal there. You can choose your AI speed there. Here you choose what you want to be playing as, uh, the Germans or the Polish. You have Fog of War, which is, of course, standard. And these are for if you are playing uh, play by email and stuff. And this here, these are options for you to actually uh, have different outcomes of the campaign. So early rain season. Uh, yeah, these are in the manual, more in-depth explained. But... I guess it means that there is more rain, uh, which hampers the uh, Luftwaffe and, and uh, the German advance, of course. Uh, Stalin breaks the promise. That means he probably he might not actually attack Poland. And your are so that was actually a big game changer for the Poles as they were struggling to get to new defensive positions and stuff. Then they were backstabbed by the Russians there. Western troops. I guess that could be that they were arriving some French and. Um, British troops to the aid of the Polish. That that they were actually promising that, but they never delivered it. <laughs> uh, Western offensive. That could may, maybe that's even more that they attacked Germany there. Better Polish equipment. So says self-explanatory. Uh, better Polish strategy. So maybe they have shuffled their forces around a bit. 
have different kind of defense lines and uh, and, and uh, things like that. So what they what the Polish did was they they actually had they actually moved a lot of their forces really close to the to the border to Germany to receive the blunt of the German assault. And the plan was that if they thought that if Germany attacked Poland, then immediately France and Britain will declare war, which they did, but they, they thought they would come to the aid a lot faster and help out in the fight. But no one, no one expected the Germans to be so fast in their attack. They were using the Blitzkrieg doctrine, was at, 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 they were using it textbook style in the Polish campaign. So they really had combined arms, panzers, infantry, artillery, and air force all combined for a devastating strike. And the Polish were not prepared for that. No one was really at the time in Europe. That's why the Germans did so well up to the um, uh, attack on Russia there. Uh, so the Blitzkrieg was worked, they punched through, the, the, the Poles were supposed to fall back on new defensive lines and then hold the Germans and then they would hope to get relieved by the British and the French. But uh, the Germans advanced so fast that it, and everybody was shocked. That so, so the Poles had just had to retreat and retreat and retreat and get, they got pocketed and the, the Germans surrounded the forces and destroyed them and they were just blitzing through the whole thing. So that they, they, the Poles never really had a chance to really recover and, and form up and, and fight back, basically. There were some areas, actually, in the initial attack that the, um, the, the, the Poles actually put up one hell of a resistance and the Germans actually had to pay a heavy price to punch her through uh, some of these defensive lines here. Anyway, when they uh, were surrounding Warsaw and taking that and moving up the the uh, Poles were sort of retreating to the east of Poland, and that's when they got backstabbed by the Russians. They advanced in, and it was sort of game over there. They, they were just destroyed and captured and had surrendered and stuff. So uh, that's basically the campaign of Poland there. So the, the speed was the uh, the German, um, how they won that war. The sure speed and aggressiveness of the attack that really won that war. Uh, if it was, if it would have been a stalemate in the war of attrition, then probably Germany would have lost. Uh, there would have been a World War One sort of situation going on again, and uh, so the Allies never really had time to actually commit forces and uh, and help out Poland because the Germans were so fast. So they instead they landed in France, as we know, and there was a, the, the uh, British expeditionary force there that was going to help out the, the the French to fend off the the German attack there. Um, let's see if I can bring up the, um, the manual again. Yes, so there was a, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, so the scale, of, what is the scale? Yes, I, th I think in the, in the big, in the big campaigns, uh, the uh, scale is, uh, I think it's like 10 kilometers a hex. So it's pretty big, uh, uh, like operational warfare going on. You're moving, uh, you're not moving like hold. Yeah, you you you're moving like broken up divisions basically. Like, what would it be? Regiments probably, uh, corps, regiments, probably regiments, not battalions. Uh, it's more regimental style uh, uh, warfare, so to speak. Um, so of course, then some units will be reduced and taken casualties, and it probably will be reduced to battalion size forces and stuff. There's some, there are some. Uh, elements of that uh, right so maybe I think that could be actually in the end of the manual let's see uh, just was just intrigued by that let's see here um, yeah so it's pretty hard to find it stuff in this manual um, let's hold on here let me just find it bear with me I'm just gonna find it that what's this division types all right um, it's somewhere in the back here uh, Let's see. This is, this is oops. This is a uh, case. Oh shit! This is case. Um, case. Okay, that's case yellow. So I'm looking for case white. Should be this one here. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go down here. So yeah, this here. You, here you have it. The variants there. So you early rain seasons there. There you have the uh, uh, apart from the higher chance of rain, all small rivers are turned into large rivers. That's going to be tough for the Germans to attack. Yeah. 
yeah, delays and stuff. They have Stalin breaks problems. Stalin, Stalin will not back will not backstab the Poles. Okay, so Stalin might allow volunteers to join the Poles in the fight against the fascists. There's a third free chance per turn that Soviet volunteers will arrive. So that looks pretty dangerous. Western troops, the Royal Navy managed to break through the Skagerrak and disembark four infantry divisions under the command of Lord Gort, the British expeditionary force. Furthermore, a small air group of 72 Spitfires will be un unloaded. The British will keep 4,000 supply points in Gdynia throughout the scenario. Wow, so that's going to be tough. Uh, Western offensive, due to the immediate defensive by the French and the West, the Germans will immediately pull back from home defense. Eight infantry, two panzer divisions as well, two artillery, two flak, one dive bomber, one recon. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. Better Polish equipment. The Poles have gotten the 400 modern Suma medium tanks from the French. Oh, shit. Yeah, that could be a challenge. Uh, better Polish strategy. The Poles have listened to the advice of the French and have deployed arms groups. Uh, Pozna, Lodz, Krakow, further inland. But doing so, the Polish forces are more concentrated and should be able to avoid piecemeal destruction. Yeah. And you have team play and stuff like that, so... Extra supplies, evacuation, yeah, so, yeah. So that's that. Uh, so there's a little story here. It tells you about the, the terrain of Poland, what to think about, the German forces there, the Poles' victory. So what the amount of victory points you need to win the battle. And the different, yeah, oh, I didn't think, I didn't have to uh, go into the manual. It's actually all here. <laughs> uh, rules, okay. So some rules, Polish reinforcements there. Okay, so there's some dangerous things going on there. Yes, it's all actually in here. You don't have to actually look at the manual there. But uh, let's fire the game up. Actually, we could go back and have a look at uh, Case Yellow as well. See how that looks. So you have the same sort of... Then, of course, you have different... Uh, I'm not going to go into all these here, but... Uh, they have the different what ifs as well, and uh, oh yeah, you can also play these as uh, these these campaigns as teams, t uh, like three players, seven players. So it's pretty cool. You can actually be a couple of people playing these. All right, so they have the um, that northern part of the campaign, I guess. Uh, Belgium, Netherlands, France, there, Germany. Yeah. Yeah, so sort of same thing there, but it's that. And we have uh, Operation Sea Lion, interesting. Yeah, so that's the invasion of the so south of England there. So you have also some different things you could choose here. It's pretty cool. Uh, the big campaign, this is the, the huge one, uh, to, if you want to play them all. Um, you can only play it as the Germans, I guess. No, you can play human as well, okay. You have hard campaign, challenging campaign, very hard, historic campaign. That's, I've heard that that's supposed to be the easiest one. So, yeah. Okay, uh, but let's get, let's get into the game uh, and see a bit about units and stuff. Uh, I, I'm sort of debating if I should... Like, do a let's play of this? I'm not sure yet. I'm j I might just, just go into the game and, ha and show different things. Uh, Germany, uh, Germany, game in progress, please. Okay, so now the German turn. It is year 1939, September the 1st. After the negotiation, diplomacy failed to bring Polish concessions. Case White, the invasion of Poland, has commenced. Rainy weather turn. So there, this is actually historically clear. There was, there was rain on the first day of the, of the attack. George von Kusha. Uh, reports that Brigadier Eberhard has taken Danzig without a struggle. So here is victory status. So Germany has 19 victory points and they need 49. So you need to have at least 30 more victory points. Poland has 40 uh, still in their hands and needs to hold at least 11 in order to not lose the whole campaign there. So you, German losses are zero and should stay under 10. Excess losses will carry to the next scenario playing the campaign mode, yeah. And I'm also, I think if you lose more, it, since we're now playing, um, yeah, so if you're playing the huge campaign, I guess, if you take more than 10% losses, you will you will have uh, decimated divisions and less units in the next campaign. But in this one, if you take more, you will lose victory points, I think. So, yeah, let's start it up here. All right, so this is it, man. Uh, Student Max, zoom out. Uh, 
so um, here you go. This is the Polish campaign here. So max zoom out, you have, this is the max zoom. You know, I, I, I like the graphics. I think the graphics are pretty good uh, in this game. Uh, so yeah, this, the, the grand strategic is you have the different army groups of the German army and uh, how they attacked, basically. You have Krakow, the, this army group, uh, 10th army yeah uh, 14th army i think they attacked they went for crack up and you have different kinds of they have different strategies some of low uh, the, the, this for they were attacking somewhere like that there was one huge air that was going straight for warsaw so they have different objectives and uh, these attacked in here you had something from the north these guys attacked the going straight for Warzo as well. These guys were trying to cut off the reinforcements. You have this strait here. Uh, that's the port of Danzig that uh, we read about has been uh, captured. You still have this port, Gdynia. So you need to take that, cut off this land bridge here to isolate this part of the forces. The Poles actually had quite a lot of forces here. So you're gonna to have to cut that off. I think that this their task was basically to go through here and cut that bridge. I mean that little gap off to seal the fate of those forces there. So how is it organized? What is this game? Yeah. So you have something called political points. These are accumulated for every sort of turn. And you use them to buy cards, basically. You have cards. And these are sort of cards to play uh, to boost certain aspects of the, uh, of the game. Uh, to boost attacks, boost reinforcements, boost maybe your air force. There's just different kind of cards. And uh, so this one here cost 10 political points. So obviously I can't afford it now. But this one, if you cash it in, you get a um, cash in some political capital and appeals high command for some additional manpower on the front. I think you get like a like a more more a, a, a new division or something that you could use in in the in the fight there basically. So these cards are uh, they are actually explained in the manual more in depth there. So you have preferences. Uh, Basically, just self-explanatory uh, uh, stats and briefings. You have the, the you have this what you had when you uh, chose the, the campaign. Basically, stats. This is sort of to keep track of um, your total troops and casualties and casualties inflicted. So it's 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 sort of a statistical. Uh, yeah. So see sort of see the dam. The, how the, the war is actually progressing there, the campaign there. They have an extensive OOB. Uh, the OOB is the of all your forces, basically. So you have order of uh, battle here. Uh, you have Army Group North, Friedrich von Bock. He had t uh, two armies at his disposal. The, uh, the third army and the fourth army. And they are sort of then divided into first corps, that's the first core, right? Yeah. And you have uh, <clears throat> Group Brand, Watering Core, and the 11th Core there. And so these are the, what units are actually coming, these. You can, jump, you can quick jump to these uh, formations. That's the 11th Division. And uh, 61st SS Kemp uh, Battle Group. And you have engineer core there, so the, this is pretty cool to play around with. You can have look at like what do, so these thirty-five infantry divisions are present. You have uh, regiments, Grenzschutz. So these are border border guard regiments, flak regiments, engineers, nineteen corps, six panzer divisions. The first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and tenth, and all that. Pretty cool that you can actually have a view of that. Here is actually the, the, this is round one, it's the 1st of September, 1939. And you have, this is a sort of hex info. So if you put your mouse over something, it will tell you here this marsh and gives you all the data for that particular 
location that the uh, modifications defense modifications the extra cost of moving moving into it and uh, yeah so that's basically information about the the, uh, the hex there preps what is uh, reps okay so these are what you yeah, those um, written accounts that appear yeah, we have to look at the cards. We only have one card, and this, they have this small map. This is sort of your tactical map, basically, but you can have a look, uh, overview of what's going on here. So it's pretty cool. Mini, you can have a mini map a, a present to quickly a jump, basically a jump map. So it's pretty good. So how's it organized? And how's the game actually played? Yeah, so I'm debating whether I should do a Let's Play or not. Because uh, these, these are so huge, uh, these the campaigns. They're, I mean, the scenarios are smaller, I guess. We could maybe do a scenario. But uh, I'm going to concentrate in this video, just basically run through the uh, the rough grounds of the game. Uh, sort of to get you intrigued if you want to buy this game or not. Uh, I'd actually highly recommend you to, to dive into these, uh, these titles, because... They're really good, man. Uh, they're really fun to play around with, and, uh, and, and I like the uh, the scale of it as well, the big operational one. So, for instance, uh, so look at the counters. So, we could jump down to uh, the south. This is actually where the main German uh, effort was uh, to draw, uh, to capture Lodz and uh, Warsaw, of course. Warsaw here. This is, this is a pretty huge buildup of forces here, as you can see. There's quite a lot of divisions here. So the highest organization is... Uh, so here you have the, the, the Grand uh, uh, Oberkommand Headquarters, OKH. They, and this one, this, is, this one doesn't have a headquarters. This is, this is the main operational. It's Walter von Brauschitz. And the cool thing is, if you click these portraits, you get like a little biography of the commander, what kind of cards he can play. He, so the, the, you, could, you could buy the big ones, the, the political points ones, the main cards, but also all these in, huge, I mean, these individual commanders of the corps and army groups, they can in, in themselves also play cards and uh, not really sure how their actual points are calculated uh, I mean what they need to actually play these cards some of them are free this is sort of the trait of the commander they can use it but let's just find so like, like this guy here uh, Kurt Hase he can play a. Uh, oh, you can't go in there. So he has a free card he can play. That unleash such. He can play it like on a uh, artillery uh, unit. Unleash such hellish artillery barrage on the enemy that they won't want to leave their foxholes. Yeah. So this he can play that card right off the bat in the initial assault. There. He also has a uh, hold a defense card. Hold the line. Uh, deliver a. Rousing speech to the selected units, which energizes them to tenacious defense there. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, you can also, so if, if I, for instance, go down and start off with the, the we'll, we'll start with this unit here for fun. So we have uh, Wilhelm Ulex. There's a story about him. He has, he, he doesn't give any combat modifiers to the troops within his, his ra radius of, of influence. He doesn't give any morale as well, and he has no political value. But he has 400 staff points, and these points are used for uh, moving your troops around. And this is this, the organization of the units uh, to um, so all that costs. And he, so he has a, he's a good like planning and, and log logistics officer, but he's not really a combat officer. He does have some cards he can play, apparently. He has... Can't view it because I can't play it, but it, it's an infantry attack card. Charge your weapons and move up. Use your respect and charisma to motivate the infantry. Yeah, so he, he can play one of those, and he has one of those bombardment cards as well. Uh, he has total combat bonus. He does give some total uh, combat bonus, though. It says... Um, if 
if I can leave it there. Total combat bonus for units under direct command of this officer. Base bonus for full staff complement, 25%. Staff bonus based on staff XP is 40. Staff bonus increased with 0% for the officer's skill, resulting in modified staff bonus of 40%. Base bonus and modified staff bonus are added up and results to 65% total bonus. So he does give some, um, the, um, what do you call it, um, bonus to his units within his command range there. And how do you tell if, if he, his command range? Uh, not sure. <laughs> We're gonna have to look at that. Uh, but if I press the, uh, that's the officer info. You have unit, the troops present in, in this is a, a German staff force of 800 infantry. There is a infantry, German infantry as well, 500 men. There's 300 trucks. And there's five armored cars in that um, core headquarters. What you can do is you can actually press these. And it'll give you uh, a, a, like a, a description of the unit there. So this uh, represents higher, uh, higher leadership uh, logistical and support troops. They are present in headquarters units and will give the troop under command based on their experience level. They do not have the combat value of regular infantry. Yeah, so they are sort of just staff. They have the experience. There's all kinds of data here. It's pretty cool. You can also compare units. I, I could compare this with something else and we'll, you could see the difference. You have some German infantry here, uh, Wehrmacht. Tell you it's only 500 men, but that's sort of a uh, defense. They have the trucks, the Opel Blitz, and they have these uh, SDK FZ221 uh, armored cars. As well in there so let's go down his command so uh, let's see so, so you have a uh, history yeah the history I think it just tells you basically what if you can have a replay of what happened uh, yeah so but if I press the uh, the supply layer this headquarters this is this is his supply range basically what he what he can supply to his troops and uh, obviously roads and railways are good for logistics but uh, his, this unit is, has a, a sort of a, a slightly less uh, supply radius here because they're in the woods as well woods and other terrain of course hampers delivery of supplies but this, if, when I click him you can see these are highlighted these are the troops under his command this is 24th uh, infantry division so let's go back. He has two divisions under his command here. He has the 30th Infantry Division. And these are... Uh, I mean, there's 4,000 men, 200 machine gunners, uh, anti-tank rifles, light mortars, medium mortars, pack guns, and they also have 75 millimeter <clears throat> field guns as well uh, in this unit. And uh, <clears throat> so it tells you a bit the stacking as well as 50. Now there's different stacking I, I've noticed. Uh, I think max stacking for this is 100 points and the, anything over 100 is considered overstacked. And then you, you will get penalties in, in both attacking and defending if you're overstacked. So I mean, and this unit here has 50 as well. So I guess both those units could be in the same hex and you will be just, just within the stacking limit, uh, so to speak. Of course, rivers and streams are a problem. Um, this is this is actually a river. You can tell it's thicker. This is sort of thinner, so this is more of a stream crossing. Uh, so, how do you move units? You might ask. Uh, what's this? Move, move. Oh, okay. You can change the thing there. All right. So, to move a unit, you basically just click it, and this is the move unit. And it'll, this is the, the, the range of that infantry unit where they can move. And you have a, you can do group movement as well. For instance, if you want to move the whole, the whole division in in a certain uh, area, they will all converge in that hex. Basically, you have set units headquarters. Okay, you could change headquarters for these units as well. And then you have this strategic transfer thing, and that is that actually costs points and you have a certain amount of points every turn to spend and uh, if so if you tr you can do big like if you want to divert a division 
you say you want to move division all the way to another area that's that is a um, strategic transfer basically so right right in the start everything is sort of lined up you probably will not need it but i guess further along the campaign as you advance into poland and and fight you might want to shift divisions around a bit if one is really weakened or taking heavy casualties and needs to rest you might need to fill that gap and move a division say from from another front down to fill that gap and, and then of course you probably would need to assign a new headquarters for it since it's going to be very far away from its apparent uh, headquarters uh what else do we need to know well so fighting is different as well so let's take 30th the infantry division for instance they were sort of tasked of uh, moving north this whole uh, battle group uh, is army Let's see who was the main man here. Uh, you have the 213th there. Yeah, so here you have uh, Johannes Blaskowitz. He was the main man for this, this these forces here. Uh, I think Blaskowitz was his. They were sort of meant to be going in this general direction and go for Poznan. And then you have not him. Um, Walter von Reichenau, he, he was in charge of the forces going straight for Warsaw there, the, the attack in the middle. And then you have, not this guy, uh, could be him, Ernst Busch, or this guy here, this is the guy, uh, Wilhelm List. He's in charge of them, so they were supposed to go for Krakow and attack that. So this, there's lots of famous generals here in the start of the war. You will notice, let me find someone. You have Hermann Hoff. He played a, a big part in the uh, Russian campaign. He, he was in charge of some panzer divisions and stuff. He's in charge of the second light division here and the third light division. See, there's panzers there, the second light divisions. There's, there's panzers. So he was a panzer commander basically he also has Achtung Panzer card he can play and he has a haste card which means he, he, he gives extra movement points to some of his forces there uh, you also have another famous guy over here. where is that guy where was he Let's see if I can find him see here Kleist you have Kleist here he's part of the cell you have a Slovakian uh, division here it's pretty cool didn't know actually they took part in the fight but uh, there's a Slovakian third the first uh, Slovakian division and the third Slovakian division there it's pretty cool uh, no the guy I'm looking for is uh, Hans Guderian. I think he's in the north. He was party up here somewhere. Here he is, the man of the hour. Hans Guderian, the great panzer general. So he's, he has, he's in charge of 2nd Panzer Division, 3rd third, third Panzer Division, sorry. 3rd um, yeah, Panzer there, man. It's a pretty, pretty powerful unit. And uh, the motorized division there and the 20th motorized division we have the Panzerlehr Battalion so this is the battalion it's it's uh, you have the two dashes there so pretty cool yeah uh, right where was I uh, this, this is probably gonna be a long video <laughs> Uh, there's probably lots of stuff I'm gonna miss as well. I'm just gonna do actually the broad, the, the broad generalization of this, uh, and then if you guys want me want to see more of it, I'll post more videos of this game. Uh, but I'm just I'm just basically going through some stuff. Uh, so the, the the game mechanics themselves are are not that complex actually. Uh, it's kind of straightforward. What you need to keep in mind is supply, and uh, so for instance, if I press this guy here. Uh, 
This is the headquarters of the Army Group South, basically, and uh, he, they give supply to them. They get supply from there, and, and the arrows tell you, basically, where the supplies are going. So he's sending supplies down there. Uh, so you, this is something to keep in track of as you advance, to have your, have your supply routes uh, open. Uh, so you have a good flow of supplies, basically. So if the Oberkommando here are sending supplies here, basically. Uh, oh, yeah, so I have that unit selected now. But if I press this unit and press the supply, uh, these all these units will be getting supplies from there. I think every single unit will be getting supplies, except uh, there's a unit in the north here that um, get through ports. They they got their supply. Yeah, this one here. See, they get their supplies through these uh, this harbor here, and it's all the way from uh, Stettin. So he sends supplies through Stettin. And they it travels by boat here, and then this armed group north is getting those supplies. So that's just a, a thing about supplies, basically. Uh, there, there, there's more in depth about that, though. Um, there, there's more to it than just what I just said. But basic, you know, basic things. <laughs> uh, so he, if you get, if I chose the main man there they have here's the supplies in they get to 25,000 and they are sending out 15,000 that is the required amount of supplies coming out 15,000 there so they have it about 10,000 plus there power points not sure what that is stack points yeah we know that divisional subunit is one staff points needed 11 staff points 250 there so in the start, the thing is looking great, but it's going to change as the fighting goes on and you start taking casualties and stuff. Uh, yeah, so back to the game here, right? So important, of course, to keep headquarters and stuff within uh, supply range and stuff. Haven't really found a button to tell, like, like a command range and stuff. Uh, probably they need to look that up in the manual there. But what you can do, for instance, so, so we're going to be attacking in the north. We're gonna, this, these guys are going to... We don't know anything. We, we, we have no recon here. So how do you recon? Every unit exerts, I think, four or five hexes of reconnaissance around them. And you have a recon sort of stat. Here, here, these are your action points. That is everything in the game. Movement, attacking, what, you, what the unit can do. Uh, these are the supply consumptions. Uh, so you have an integrity. This, this is sort of self-exploratory. Readiness, the higher the number, the better, of course. The experience there, uh, morale is 50, uh, and they have, they're already entr entrenched already at the start here, because they're, they're in, a, in a wooded, light forest hex there, and they're sort of prepared to attack, so they have an entrenched value there. That will change. They have slightly less, because they're in, in, in an open field, I think. And these guys are in a city, or in, in, a, in a town there, so they have pretty high uh, entrenchment bonuses. So basically what you do is you, uh, so we, we want to know what's going on. You might want to send some air reconnaissance. So you have air as well. You have different air wings. So we have an air wing Fliegerkorps uh, 10 in uh, station in Breslau. And that, th these are 40 uh, HS129. Um, these are reconnaissance planes. We have uh, 40 BF109s and we have 30 uh, BF, these are bomber planes. Uh, the Messerschmitt BF uh, heavy fighter, which one to introduce? Okay, so I thought they might be more. These are fighter planes, yeah. Yeah, so we want to send some uh, reconnaissance, basically. So what you do, uh, basically, you just sort of let's see what's going on at Les Lesno. Uh, so you click that town, and and then you get this. We can plot artillery there. Uh, we don't have probably have anything that's in within range, so you can you can check that. There's no there's no artillery in range of that place. But you can press this, and okay. That, oh, sorry, that was an airstrike. We don't want to do that. No, no, I'm all wrong here. Uh, <laughs> what you need to do is you need to press the planes. I mean the airbase, and you press this. Uh, 
uh, we want to do reconnaissance missions. As you can see, we can uh, do quite the, the range of reconnaissance here. Then you press this and you press that. So we had a re recon there. Looks like we saw some enemy forces there. Yeah, there's, a, there's an enemy unit here. There is something called Velkopska Cavalry Brigade. There's a cavalry brigade station in that town. That's what we could see. Uh, so let's move up. So movement is basic. Just press this, and uh, you advance basically. So let's just charge this uh, division straight up here. And you, see, you can see the zone of control changes. This is the border. We're now in, taking control. We're co getting a bridgehead going here. The other two ends up there. And now we, we get more intel on this unit. It's actually st stronger than our initial uh, reconnaissance said. Uh, and then we have the 3rd Regiment there. Uh, they can move up here, capture that. There's fields as well, but now we have that. And we have an artillery unit here. This is the uh, artillery for the, for the division here, divisional artillery. You also have core artillery. Uh, for instance, if we go down to uh, some somewhere here, for instance, uh, this is the uh, this is core artillery for the uh, 15th Corps here. They have artillery assets they can use as well. Now, a thing that was there is no real button to, to sort of see range of artillery, and that was I was trying to look for that in the manual. It's pretty hard to find, but for instance. If you click the guns, these these uh, classic uh, 10.5 centimeter guns that you, the, the Germans were using, it says that the uh, the range was up to 19, about 19 kilometers, roughly two hexes, since one is 10. So they have a range of about two hexes, one, two. So they need to be at least two hexes from the enemy to be able to call in, I mean, to, to fire artillery. And and the and the and these ones the uh, 155s actually had less. They had a 13 uh, kilometer range. So, but they, that that means they could just about reach into the uh, the hex there. So you want to move them as well. Uh, we might as well put them in the deploy them here in the woods. And now they're all out of. Move. See, they have only have five um, action points left. These have 35. So. They still have some movement. They can they can actually advance into there, but uh, yeah. So they're advancing up there, and uh, see now now we have even more intel. It's actually strength of thirty one now. So kind of interesting to um, see that we have an engineer unit. So engineers can basically repair and blow bridges, and. Uh, that's basically what they can do. I'm not really sure what else they can do, but uh, they are for blowing up or repairing bridges because the the poles would probably try to destroy bridges as you're moving in, and you're going to have to repair them to get across. So that engineer unit could advance over the river, I guess. They're motorized. Yeah. So here we have the 24th division. So they will advance. Basically, you maybe move them up here. Right, right, there's an enemy unit in here. There's another cavalry brigade stationed in that town in Kotoshini. Uh, we might actually have enough to attack them, uh, but we are out of range of the artillery. So we want to move maybe the artillery up one hex. We should be in range. So, how, so this is how you do that. I mean, we could just, you always click the hex you want to attack, and then you decide what you're going to be doing. So what do you want to do here? We, we could do a uh, land attack, we could do an artillery strike, or we could do an air strike. Uh, so we want to do an artillery strike, say. So we press the artillery, and then we press the artillery for the 24th, for instance. And preparing an artillery uh, attack. So we want to select the 24th and add it. So it says we have a stack of 20 versus the 100 is the max. And so they will uh, uh, do a, a artillery bombardment on this town. Because they're, obviously, they're going to have some good defense in here. They're in, they're in the city, so they're going to have some good defense for, for that artillery strike. Uh, so once you've done that, 
See, you can also press the all. If, there, if there's another unit that you might think is, a, is there, but you can't find it, you, if you press the all button, you, every single unit that can actually fire on that hex will pop up. Now we can only fire it with 24. So we're going to resolve this. What happened? Oh, it just deselected. So attack. Yeah, so now that those guns are firing, all guns fired. Uh, but it looks a bit, maybe not all, but. So these were the enemy forces, and they took, look, but it looks like they took some slight casualties on their cavalry, but nothing else really. I think there was a counter bat battery as well, looks like. So you can go for text. It says. Uh, 10.5 centimeter guns, 35 were used, and 15 heavy guns. And uh, we didn't take any casualties, we were, were bombarding. The defenders was the Polish cavalry. There was 2,500 of them. There was 1,900 in, in the front. We killed 200, apparently. 200 dead, and 400 retreated. There's still 2,300 left. So it's only 200 uh, that actually took some casualties there. Uh, we didn't take out any BARs or guns or anything. We did take out some... Um, we didn't take any guns out either, no. They, those infantry guns retreated from the front there. So they're, they're, they're still intact. And uh, no armored cars or anything. And so... Our uh, readiness is still... Good. We just fired our guns. We didn't take any casualties. We gained some experience from it. And, but the defenders, since they took 200 dead, they actually lost some of their uh, readiness. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't get any experience. They lost some, only two points in morale, hardly anything. And the, uh, the entrenchment was sort of dis damaged in that attack. We probably destroyed a couple of you know, uh, defensive um, obstacles and stuff. So they, they took damage. And that's basically what it looks like. So graphic is this, this quick one. The text show you have the, you have it detailed as well. So there were seven rounds of bombardment. I think it's because we moved as well. This one is a bit tricky. I'm not really sure how to read this one, but for, if you press round one, uh, okay, so four guns start stats at start of round. Okay, four guns attack the Polish cavalry there at the first. Then there's more. Then the cavalry retreated. We pinned some cavalry. Some more cavalry retreated there. Maybe that caused some damage. So these are all the sort of sort of divided into that. The 24th Infantry Division was involved, and the uh, this cavalry brigade was involved as well. Uh, units reported. Okay, so there was no real reports. Okay, so that's that's what it looks like basically. That's that's, that's how you do an artillery strike. Uh, so we, I guess we could make it. Now we've been bombarded it. We could do an attack with this the, the 24th Infantry Division. Uh, it's still going to be tough though. They're still entrenched. It's quite a formidable force there. Uh, we are almost outnumbering them. Well, you, you also get bonuses from attacking from different directions. Uh, it adds up the, to the points. Now, I don't know if we can actually get a unit to attack here. I mean, if they have enough movement points to actually attack. Um, we could maybe just see if we can put that unit in there. I don't think we have enough to attack. No. 30 points is not enough, I think. But we have a stacking, now we have a max stack here. Both these units have about 100. So if I press this and go for an attack, uh, there's only one unit that can attack. That unit I moved in cannot, they don't have enough movement points to attack. But just for the sake of it, just to see what happens in a normal attack. So we attack, since we have a 50 out of 100 there versus 28. So we get a bonus for it being in the divisional attack there and we attack we're probably going to fail this because yeah we moved and we didn't have that many movement points so we failed they're still holding it uh, so you can have a look at the text there so we um, we attack with 4,000 infantry 
we lost 100 men. We didn't lose anything else, we just lost 100 men there. Uh, we did cause damage on the cavalry again, we killed over 400. Uh, so they were they are retreated there. We did we did cause some damage on them. Another four hundred uh, dead. Uh, about six. So about six hundred cavalry has been destroyed there now. And uh, our readiness went down since we used. We're actually down at eighty five there and forty eight morale. We lost some morale as well. The enemy are really getting getting chipped down there. They're they they're going down to. Uh, the entrenchment also went down. Morale went down. They gained some experiences, they were fighting us, and their readiness is down to 54 now, it's pretty bad. And we have the, this last one here, uh, it's not going to make it. Uh, doesn't have enough movement there, so that's basically how, how it works. And of course you get different bonuses from attacking in different areas and stuff. Uh, Tanks and stuff move a lot faster. Motorized units have better than foot, these are foot sloggers. They don't have any trucks or anything to travel with. So that's basically how an attack, uh, how, how, how you do it, basically. You can also do an airstrike, for instance. We could we could hit them with an, uh, an airstrike. Probably should have done that just before. So if I press the airstrike button, I can select these planes here. We can we can go for an, for an air attack as well. They're in the city now, so they're going to have good defense. But for instance, I just launch an airstrike there. We didn't cause any damage to the enemy at all. It was just... Uh, you know, an attack that didn't do any damage at all. Nothing happened. Uh, they lost one point <laughs> in their readiness. Uh, so, yeah, that was no effect whatsoever, that airstrike. So, uh, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, okay, this video is getting really long. I probably should end it, but this is, I mean, in broad strikes, how it works. Of course, there's some details that you need to keep track of, but as I've said, if you guys want me to do more of this um, on the channel I could do it uh, but it would be a very long let's play because uh, this is a very very time-consuming game uh, especially do, doing these huge uh, um, huge campaigns here but as you can see this game man has some great potential it looks really really fun uh, and um, Things to keep track of here for sure. I do like the card system as well. I think that's kind of a nice touch that you could play some, and that sort of mirrors the, the commander's ability that some units, because the commanders actually played a, lot, a huge part in, in many of the these battles, and 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 the, it will sort of show that they are, they are present and they are engaged in the fighting, and they and they're like um, strategic and uh, command ability actually plays part in the fighting on the ground and stuff. So. Yeah, so uh, we're going to pretty end it here. And so this will be sort of an introductionary video, sort of general information, sort of of this great game. Um, it wasn't requested, so I keep my promises. I show games that people request. But uh, all in all, great game. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to try out the Arden one. Uh, that, that seems to be, I like that. That's actually, as I said before, a smaller scale. Could be more fun. Uh, but I do appreciate this large as well. It's kind of fun to play around with as well. All right, so this is going to wrap it up. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you could you watch the whole video. <laughs> like and subscribe. And I will see you in the future. Have a good one.